This is the last pillar for practicing. Uh, I've given you two exercises. Uh, one covers evenness, the other covers sort of placement. Uh, um, and this one is, is trying to re reorganize uh, how you think about music. Uh, the third pillar is called note grouping. And it's really sort of just like a mental exercise more than anything else. What it's trying to teach you, okay, here's how this works. Um, we're gonna assign numbers to notes. Okay, so if I have four 16th notes, I'm gonna assign the number four for the first note the number one for the second note, the number two for the third note, and the number three for the fourth note. Um, I pulled up my, my Rose book from when I, when I was in high school. If you can look at the very, very beginning, you see sort of what's printed. You see, you see under the second note, you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And the, the idea is this, four is gonna be the loudest dynamic you can possibly play. One is gonna be the softest dynamic you can possibly play. Okay, so the idea is you play da, 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 da. And by doing so, what you're trying to do is you're trying to give um, direction through the notes that are there. If you, ever, if you ever listen to really, really young players play, often it'll sound really like da-da-da, 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 because they're just trying to stay in time, right? But, but if you can learn to play through notes, uh, as in instead of playing off of the downbeat now, now you have a downbeat and then three pickup notes, as in they're going th to the next beat, it'll give your technique a, a much better um, evenness because now every note has a purpose. It's not just one note and then three leftover notes, right? It's, it, you're actually playing in between the beats uh, a, lot, a lot clearer. Um, this is rows number four from the 40. Uh, it's just sort of like a variations on, on G major, but I just wanna show you what, 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 how you should practice this um, before you can sort of implement it. that and the numbers actually have to be different dynamics they, they can't just be sort of loud soft uh, uh, the idea is again to try to get you to think about motion in, in between all of this this is actually a technique that was uh, invented by uh, Tabato who's a, a very famous oboe player and it's sort of like uh, been a staple for wind playing for a very very long time if, if you're really interested in this sort of thing there's a, a great book called sound in motion by David McGill that um, I highly recommend you pick up uh, because again, it's, it's starting to think about music uh, in, in a different way than sort of just the very, very elementary. Um, note grouping doesn't only come in fours, right? Otherwise it wouldn't be that effective. You can also apply it for um, uh, sextuplets, for example, if you have uh, two sets of triplets, you can think about of six. Uh, more commonly, if you're playing in four, four time and you have six sixteenth notes, you can think about of eight. Uh, because if you have sort of less pulses in music, it sounds easier and it sounds more professional. Um, uh, the other thing you can apply note grouping to is uh, planning dynamics, right? If you want to plan a phrase properly, now you, can, you actually have numbers. You can think about, okay, the peak of the phrase is here, so I'm going to go there with the numbers. I'm going to cover that in the uh, how to phrase section, but uh, this is, I just want to get this note grouping concept sort of planted in your mind so that if, if, you sh if dotted rhythms and fingers ahead don't, don't solve your problem, this probably will. I forgot to mention that obviously you're not gonna play this way. It's just sort of the, the dynamics serve as a function to try to get you to think that way. When you're actually playing music, uh, you're not gonna do this, otherwise you kinda of get kinda of seasick, right? <laughs>